Hey guys, it's Ross, and we've been getting lots of rain here in Pennsylvania. Uh, just a ton. I mean, it, it was going on for like almost a full week. And when you get a lot of rain like that, almost we had almost two inches of rain, I think, probably more uh, in that week. It really affects the quality of figs. They split. And then once they split, guys, they um, the insects get in there. You know, it, it starts to ferment, spoil. Really, really not good. Um, and I like to really be able to dry my figs, but any source of humidity or rain really prevents that. And we, we had a nice little dry period of maybe about three days, and I picked some figs this morning that weren't really perfect. They weren't really that ripe, but I knew that today it was going to rain, and tomorrow it's going to rain. This is kind of the remnants of, I think, the hurricane that hit North Carolina. You know... I'm really lucky that I'm not in North Carolina because that would have been way worse than what I'm getting. But the, the all the rain that we've been getting has really, um, really been a shame. Um, like I said, I like to be able to dry my figs. And a lot of things I also try to dry, and I use this Nesco dehydrator here that I have, guys. You can see I've been drying some bananas, making banana chips. They're really, really good. You know, you just get some overripe fruit. I had a couple apples and a couple peaches that were overripe. We never got around to it. And you, you know, cut these guys up in slices and dry them. They're really, really tasty. Even if they're overripe, you know, it's a somewhat black banana. It's still really good dried. We also have some homegrown peppers here. And these guys, um, I'm trying something new, but I know a lot of Italian people will string up their peppers and put them in a dry place and they'll let them hang there for a while and dry them. They do a lot of that with Jimmy Nardello's or you know, chili peppers, a lot of people do that with banana peppers. So I figured I would dry my sweet peppers here and then I'm gonna grill these guys and they're gonna come out really, really good. Or even uh, put them on the stove with some olive oil and kind of sear them a little bit. You know, add some salt. And then I've also got grapes here. And these are some grapes that weren't really doing so hot. They still have a little bit longer to go. You can see the grape is still not really a raisin yet. This one maybe looks like it's approaching raisin, but still got a little bit of moisture to take out of this stuff here. But for the most part, a lot of this is done. And even though it's been raining, I've still been able to enjoy some figs because... You know, here's the, the really, really cool part of this video, guys. Here are some figs that I've been sent um, by some friends. And we have this one here. This is an Inchario Preto that if you guys went to the Staten Island Fig Festival and met me there and you approached me, you got to try this. Now, there's some of you guys I've been hearing that were there and never said hello. So... This is what you missed out on. Um, and this is a really, really tasty fig. I, I kind of want to open this up for you guys and show you the inside. This is a Smyrna type that my that uh, Lampo actually grew this and dried it himself in Portugal and got this to California and then it was sent from California to New York and then it was brought to me in Pennsylvania. So really, really cool how this ended up getting in my hands. There was a whole bag of them. But they're all gone now. Um, and then we also have some figs here that my buddy Stephen Winter gave me. And before eating all of these, I figured I'd get them on camera for you all. Because my friend Fruit Nut, Stephen Winter, he sells a lot of trees, by the way, on eBay for those of you who are interested in buying some fig trees. He has some really good varieties and he has uh, trees that are um, just packaged and shift very well um, but he also has extremely high fruit quality in his greenhouse he's able to he's able to control the environment in his greenhouse in such a way that enables him to dry these figs right on the tree uh, Lampo I believe sun dries his figs so he'll pick them at a certain stage and then take them off and I think he sun dries them and then but Steven, for the most part, he uh, is able to dry a lot of them on the tree. 
maybe if he needs to get them a little bit more dry to help them store better, um, he'll put them in a dehydrator, I believe. But the amount of like in, the insanity of what this is in front of me is kind of incredible because not only are these dried figs, which are quite tasty, um, you know, the intensity is really there when it's dried, but they are also of really exceptional varieties like these are some of the top varieties in the world that you can grow yourself so to be able to have these in front of me is no joke i feel like a kid in a candy store because this is literally this is what this is it's it's candy so i kind of want to eat these guys and kind of describe it for you if you were at staten island and you got to see some of these figs guys or you got to taste some of them let us know down in the comments how good they were now Lampos here the Inchario Preto reminds me more of a dried Turkish fig like it's that degree of dryness but it's really really good it's way better than any Turkish fig or any dried fig I've ever eaten really crunchy skin or chewy skin, crunchy interior. I mean, this is a high quality fig. So I'm really thankful to Lampo that he was able to get these to me. And then we have Stephen Winter's figs, which these are at varying degrees of ripeness. This one here kind of reminds me, I don't know what variety this is, but it's probably like a Battaglia Green or a JH Adriatic or maybe Strawberry Verte. This one's at the same degree of ripeness as the Inchario Preto. That's really good. But then we have other ones here, which I don't know what these are. You know, I can't tell what kind of fig this is by looking at it when it's dried like this. But this is like more gooey, less dried. Um, probably closer to a fresh fig, way closer to a fresh fig than this guy here and the Inchario Preto. Wow. Man, oh man, is that good. It looks like he kind of cuts them and then puts them in the dehydrator. So um, you can see that there. Kind of cuts them in half. Some of this is probably like Black Madeira, Preto. This one here looks like a Black Madeira to me. So let's see what a, this is like a dried Black Madeira here. Let's see what this tastes like. If you were, if you're this lucky to be able to dry Black Madeiras, you are, you're, li you're living life right. Look at that. That's just, it's just nuts. I mean, Stephen, I know he doesn't, he has so many figs that he just, he ha, he's forced to dry them. And he, he likes to dry them because he likes to eat them in the wintertime, I believe he said. You know, these will, these will store for quite some time with the amount of sugar in them. That is just really, really good. A dried black Madeira I just ate. This here looks like, um, Maybe a Col de Don Blanc or a, another Strawberry Verte. Let's see what this one tastes like. I mean, look at these, man. They're so, so good. Wow. What else do we have in this bag? This goodie bag here. Maybe some different varieties. I'm not sure. There's so many figs in here. Let's eat what I think is another black Madeira. This is just, it's crazy. Anyway, I wanna thank Lampo. I wanna thank Steven, Mr. Fruit Nut for sending me these figs. They, these are really, really quite a treat. And I know the people at Staten Island that I gave Lampo's figs to enjoy these. Everybody was saying how good they were. So that's a bit of the video, guys. 
I'm gonna hope the rain subsides here. We can, you know, we can cross our fingers for something close, I guess, to a dry fig or as close as I can get it. But nothing beats living in a dry climate, growing figs and being able to dry them pretty much on the tree. So that's the video guys, hope you were here. I wish you guys were here to be able to taste just how good these were, these are. Anyway, everyone, take care. I'll talk to you all later.